we also were making money on it. <laughs> you know, that was it. We, our first full year of business was $75 million in revenue, and the next year was $375 million. We were, until Microsoft kind of came in and punched us in the face, we were the fastest growing company in history. It's another example of With his Navigator browser um, dominating the internet, these were sunny days for Mark and Netscape. The storm would come later. Thanks to the World Wide Web and the browser, the internet was transformed. Suddenly, here was the recipe for commercial opportunities in cyberspace. A giant feast of digital delights laid out for anyone with a PC and a modem to enjoy. So how does it work? The internet is like a giant restaurant. You look in a menu for something that appeals, order it, the order goes off somewhere and is served up by a waiter or waitress. Well, the internet's the same way. The individual PC that's ordering the information is called a client. And the big computer at the end of the line that provides what the client needs is called the server. These days it often takes so long, perhaps it should be called a waiter. The business of building these servers is another of the opportunities created by the internet. And serving up information turns out to be very profitable. It's selling like hotcakes. The biggest of these information providers is America Online, a company now worth $16 billion. Even in the real world of trains, planes, and automobiles, many of us still need a tour operator to package our travel. Founder Steve Case saw a similar opportunity in the virtual world, offering beginners the internet experience in an all-in-one package. Now this may be a virtual world, but it still needs real hardware. In all this talk of wiring the world, it's easy to forget that someone actually has to do the job of wiring it. And that's happening here at America Online's new data center in Virginia, where computers and routers and modems are going in that are going to give 10 million people access to the internet and beyond. Excuse me. Welcome. You've got mail. in 1982 bought my first computer and wanted to hook it up and be part of this this, this online world and, and went to great lengths to make that happen. It took many months, hundreds of dollars to get the modem to work with the software, to work with the cable, to work with the computer, to actually connect to this this this, this uh, world. So it was very frustrating. At the same time, I found it kind of exhilarating that I actually got it to work and I was able to access information and talk to people all around the world from my little desktop in Wichita, Kansas, which is where I was living at the time. So I thought the whole thing was really quite magical. And the companies that are leaders in making that happen and popularizing that concept for a mainstream audience, I think are going to be very, very successful. And we'd like AOL to be in this new interactive world what AT&T was in the telephone business 100 years ago, or Microsoft has been more recently in the, in the software business. There's a, there's a big opportunity here. Oddly enough, Microsoft wanted to be the Microsoft of the online market, too. But for a change, Microsoft didn't succeed. The Microsoft network was our uh, decision to get into the online service business. Uh, we thought that for people at home in particular, this would be explosive. And we, we very much uh, believe that to this day. Uh, electronic mail, staying in touch with your friends, seeing what's going on in the local community, getting up-to-date news, uh, and having that be nicely packaged with chat sessions and neat new software features. We saw a market for that. Even I made a foray into this marketplace. Back in 1994, Apple Computer created an online consumer service called eWorld. One of its notable attractions was the columnist Robert X. Cringely. At the time, I made this bold statement. So my job on eWorld is to create controversy and therefore get a lot of people talking over the electronic back fence. Impressive. eWorld went belly up, though Apple fights on. And me? Why do you think I'm schmoozing with the guy who runs America Online? He has 10 million subscribers already, but 80% of Americans aren't wired. That's what I'd call an opportunity. There are more users, more websites, and more data sources joining the Internet every day. Plenty brings its problems. The more places you have to look for information, the harder it is to find what you want. We need help, so people have invented tools for the job. 
Search engine, another word invented for the internet. The World Wide Web is an enormous collection of database libraries that hold information rather than books. The problem is, how do you find what you want to know in that mass of information? Well, librarians cracked that problem years ago. They invented the catalog. Rather than look individually through all those books, I can find what I want by searching this card catalog. On the internet, the same thing is accomplished by a search engine. It continually catalogs and indexes every word in all those databases. So if you want to know about, say, the career of Arnold Schwarzenegger, go to the search engine, it searches its index, and presto, there's everything you ever wanted to know about Arnie. And a lot you didn't. Two things are constant in Silicon Valley, the steady consumption of soda and change. Excite's original product was just a search engine. Now they've built a business around it. They changed the company name. The offices changed from grungy to glitzy. And in 1995, they became that web phenomenon, an internet media site. A cross between an electronic newspaper and a cable network funded by advertising. We call ourselves publishing on steroids. So devoid of print, paper, and ink, we do what a publisher does or a cable provider does. We aggregate consumers around our programming, and then we sell that demographic back to advertisers. The different ways to make money in the internet are just beginning to emerge. For Excite, the model is a media channel with content to attract me and advertising to catch my eye while I'm there. But there are other ways. Pay-per-view, mail-order shopping of every kind, games, auctions, and services with no earthly parallel. They're all putting their faith in a new medium to deliver the big payoff. Every time a new visual medium is invented, one application drives the market. This was true for still photography, true for motion pictures, it was especially true for VCRs, and it's true for the World Wide Web. I'm talking about sex. Sex sells, but there is a market for it, and it's true capitalism. If there's a market for it, it will be filled, and it's legal, and there's nothing wrong with it. In the beginning of this industry, like other industries, people are willing to pay for adult content. The home video cassette industry is, is a prime example. Initially, people were paying several thousand dollars back in the 70s for machines uh, to go home and basically watch adult content. As part of this job, of course, you have to type. Is there, is there a typing speed requirement? No. You know, you want to have your nails manicured and everything, and nails do slip a lot on the keyboard. Sure. But as long as you just, like, simple things like, hi, how are you, babe? You know? And you could just put R, U. You don't have mm -hmm. to put the whole word down. Sure. And then most of the time you're saying, oh, yeah, baby. So you go, <laughs> oh. <laughs> Then you go, oh, baby. Does your mom know the, the, the work you do? Yeah, actually she does. Yeah, she's okay with it. You know, it's the 60s thing. She's all in that 60s life. Oh, you so. had a hippie mom. Yeah. So it's it's great now. Cool. Grandma, on the other hand, would not understand. But then anything with computers? Mm -hmm. Oh, honey, you're moving up in the world. And <laughs> computers, that computer thing, that's going far, that's going far. That's futures <laughs> in computers. So as long as they tell them about the computers, it's fine. It didn't take long for the advertising industry to notice the growing number of eyeballs staring at websites, or for website operators to start selling those eyeballs to the advertisers. In 1999, online advertising revenue will reach $2 billion, and it's been doubling each year. How about advertising? Well, people say, what a puny number. The software industry only had $300 million in advertising for that internet-supported internet companies that were supported by advertising. Well, I say like, yo, a year before that we had zero. Now we had 300. This March we had 57 million. Who thought we would own advertising? 